groundwater bypass is a dangerous performance. TEPCO plans to discharge the pumped up contaminated water into the Pacific over 40 years. Fukushima Power Station's nuclear scare. 400,000 times normal radiation, March 15, 2011. Abe at ground zero, the consequences of inaction at Fukushima Daiichi. Tokyo Electric Power Company's radioactive lies. Arsonists investigating the fire. To negotiate with the nuclear industry is like debating with the drug cartels about the introduction of law and order. TEPCO finds new radioactive water leak at Fukushima, October 3, 2013. Officials say they have detected 200,000 becquerels per liter of radioactive substances, including strontium-90, which far surpasses the legal limit of 30 becquerels. At Fukushima, fear of a losing battle. Battle to stabilize earthquake reactors, March 12, 2011. Attention remains focused on the Fukushima, Daiichi, and Diani nuclear power plants as Japan struggles to cope in the aftermath of its worst worst earthquake in recorded history. Dramatic explosion did not damage containment and seawater injection continues through the night. Fukushima fishermen key in radiation fight. The utility must first get the approval of the 1,500 members of Fukushima's fishing cooperative and others in the area to begin using the bypass. With TEPCO's history of falsifying safety reports, hiding accidents, and ignoring warnings, fishermen aren't convinced the system is safe. Saturday, August 10, 2013. Fukushima contaminated water and hundreds of tons per day. Ocean pollution, by way of heavily contaminated groundwater, has finally snapped free of TEPCO's lies and BS. And note, their latest desperate proposal would make things even worse. Kamikaze time for Japan? August 7, 2013. Japan government to help stop radioactive leaks. There is a heightened concern among the public, particularly about the contaminated water problem. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said Wednesday during a government nuclear disaster response meeting at his office. This is an urgent matter that needs to be addressed. The government will step in to take firm measures. The Fukushima disaster has been urgent since March the 11th, 2011. TEPCO has needed outside help from the beginning. Since a major leak occurred from a maintenance pit a month after these reactors at the plant melted following the disasters, TEPCO had denied any further leaks of radioactive water into the sea, despite repeated warnings by experts until finally acknowledging them last month. Co-op Sapporo's self-imposed test on radioactive substances. We have conducted self-imposed tests since March 2011, TEPCO's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant disaster. Following the Fukushima disaster, the Japanese government raised the acceptable level of radioactive substances in food to a new shocking level. Then on March 2012, the government lowered the levels to quiet the public and export consumers. These levels are still inappropriate in terms of human health, especially babies. Contamination checks on evacuated residents, March 13, 2011. A fourth person initially gave a reading of over 100,000 counts per minute, but a second measurement taken after the person had removed their shoes was just under 40,000 counts per minute. Is removing of shoes supposed to make us believe that the exposure was not really serious? The 100,000 counts per minute is the actual total exposure of radiation. The shoes count. This person, after all, was wearing these 60,000 count per minute shoes until the time of reading and no doubt had to put these same shoes on to walk away. Why has TEPCO been downplaying the severity of this disaster? Cracks expand for TEPCO. TEPCO has admitted that it concealed the results of negative inspections on its boiling water reactors, November 1st, 2002. 
TEPCO has a long history of lying. We should expect nothing more from TEPCO today. The Japanese government has stepped in to take action on the Fukushima disaster reports in October 2013 by creating a new law which threatens whistleblowers with prison terms of up to 10 years and 5 years imprisonment for any media, local or foreign, asking questions about events that the Japanese government deemed to be sensitive material. TEPCO seeks permission to dump groundwater from Fukushima plant into ocean May 14, 2013. The contaminated water storage has been a problem since early in the accident. TEPCO officials acknowledged last month that a lack of storage space has become a crisis. TEPCO has promised to speed up building more reliable steel tanks and eventually empty the underground tanks. TEPCO has been allowing radioactive water to enter the Pacific Ocean since the, d the disaster began from March 2011. So why bother asking for permission now? Fukushima, TEPCO, Destroyer of Worlds, July 18, 2011. Fukushima disaster is not over, but the Ministry of Environment is trying to bring another contamination plan all over the world by burning radioactive waste that is more than 80,000 becquerels per kilogram. Last fall, the Ministry of Environment secretly ordered Hitachi Zosen to construct a controversial radioactive waste incinerator in the small village of Samwaga with only 4,000 population. Construction has been completed uh, last June, but there's been no prior information about the project, no such public consultation. Furthermore, last week, landowners spoke out they never admitted nor signed the contract, but the government mysteriously announced they had all landowners' consent to run the project. In the weeks immediately following the explosion at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor, the Japanese government gave approval for TEPCO to release contaminated water into the sea. Tens of metric tons were dumped. This article contains a great deal more information that I'm uh, not including in this report, but I will leave a link in the uh, description box. March 14, 2011, Discussion Thread Japanese Nuclear Reactors and the 11th March 2011 Earthquake there is no credible risk of a serious accident. All reactors responded by insert insertion of control rods to shut down their nuclear reactions. Thus, power levels in all cases drop quickly to about 5% of maximum output, and the nuclear chain reaction ceased. Now, if only this were true. TEPCO faking. Fukushima fix. December 16, 2011. Conditions at the Fukushima No. 1 nuclear plant are far worse than its operator or the government has admitted, according to Mr. Suzuki, a freelance journalist who spent more than a month working undercover at the power station. Nuclear technology experts I've spoken to say that there are people living in areas where no one should be. It's almost as though they're living inside a nuclear plant, says Suzuki. Based on his own radiation readings, he believes that the 80-kilometer radius evacuation advisory issued by the United States government after the meltdowns was about right, adding that the government probably decided on the current no-go zones to avoid immense tasks of evacuating larger cities. Furthermore, the daily radiation screenings are essentially an act, with the detector passed too quickly over each worker, while the line to the buzzer that is supposed to sound when there is a problem has been cut. People that want to uh, read more from Mr. Suzuki's books, I've left a link in the video description. TEPCO admits radioactive flow into the Pacific from Fukushima, August 24, 2013. TEPCO estimated from May 2011 to the start of August about 40 trillion becquerels of radioactive tritium and 20 becquerels of cesium and 10 trillion becquerels of strontium may have flowed from the damaged Fukushima No. 1 nuclear complex into the sea, the Japan's Times reported. Chikota Kanda, 
oceanographer at Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology, told the Japan Times Friday, tritium, contaminating waters surrounding the Fukushima No. 1 reactor plant, will likely have little effect on marine life because it has been diluted by seawater. Even the Japanese universities are in on the lie. Radioactive substances do not dilute in any form of water. To further insult us, they refer to tritium, cesium, and iodine, the lesser though still deadly radioactive isotopes. Why are we not being told about the plutonium, the uranium-235, the uranium-238? Also, whatever amount of polonium that was released would dissolve in water without any diluting effects. The more serious threats have never been reported by TEPCO or any division of the Japanese government. Panel proposes TEPCO be stripped of responsibility for Fukushima. Surprising many watchers who say TEPCO hasn't shown any responsibility yet. Farm Co-op demands state TEPCO compensation May 16, 2011. Fukushima's farmers can't sell their produce. Fishermen criticize TEPCO over wastewater management. The requested article is gone. Deletion of media reports is common and widespread practice of TEPCO and the current Japanese government, Shinzo Abebe. Fishermen lambaste TEPCO over radioactive waste leaks, July 25, 2013. We are exasperated at the development, which is an act of treason to all fishing industry workers and to all members of the public in Japan. Two and a half years after a series of meltdowns, Japan's efforts to clean up what remains of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is turning into another kind of disaster. The site now stores 90 million gallons of radioactive water, more than enough to fill Yankee Stadium to the brim. An additional 400 tons of toxic water is flowing daily into the Pacific Ocean, and almost every week the plant owner acknowledges a new leak. The coastal Diachi plant is built on an old riverbed, its backyard a line of forested hills and mountains. Even before the 2011 disaster, the rainfall from across the region would funnel towards the plant. Such inflow was rarely a problem because a piping system collected groundwater and spit it into the ocean. Minor leaks would sometimes form in buildings built below sea level, but even that water, uncontaminated, was easy to dump out, pump out and dump into the ocean. Understanding that the water building up in the drainage troughs around the plant is a normal function. The pipes and trenches were part of the original building plan for Diachi. They deliberately built Diachi with the basement sitting inside an underground river so the groundwater would surround the basement at all times. Was this to add to reactor cooling of the uh, containment? What? TEPCO split looms as utility lacks motive to fix Fukushima. More than 30 months after an earthquake triggered the world's worst nuclear disaster in a quarter of a century, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is being told by his own party that Japan's response is failing. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company alone isn't up to the task of managing the cleanup and decommissioning of the atomic station in Fukushima. That's the view of Tadamori Oshima, head of a task force in charge of Fukushima's recovery and former vice president of Abe's Liberal Democratic Party. Japan extends the Fukushima cleanup deadline to 2017 plans to de decontaminate six towns and villages close to Japan's Fukushima nuclear plant have been delayed by up to three more years, officials say. Previous Fukushima problems. October 21st, radioactive water overflows a containment barrier after heavy rain. October 7th, a plant worker accidentally switches off power to pumps used for cooling damaged reactors. October 3rd, TEPCO says there's a radioactive water leak after workers overfill a storage tank. August 21st, Japan's nuclear agency upgrades Fukushima 
alert level. August 20th. TEPCO says 300 tons of radioactive water has leaked from a storage tank into the ground. In July, TEPCO for the first time admits radioactive water is going into the sea. June, TEPCO says radioactive water leaking from a storage tank to the ground. April, TEPCO says a fresh radioactive water leak at Fukushima. March, TEPCO suspects a rodent may have been behind a power cut that shut down cooling systems. December 2011, contaminated water leaks from a treatment system caused a crack in the foundation. The radiation evacuation advisory imposed on part of Tumura Fukushima Prefecture might be lifted in April at the request of residents January 1, 2014. The Japanese government listens when the residents want back into the exclusion zone, yet the radiation levels are still too high. What's wrong with this government? Have they no sense at all for human rights and public health? Fukushima, the burdens of Japan's financial system, May 30, 2011. The Fukushima disaster has crippled Japan's financial system, the direct costs of rebuilding housing and corporate facilities and social infrastructure. In addition, there are indirect costs which affect the economy as a whole. Those include losses from a decline in consumer confidence and demand, damages to production and output from power shortages and unraveled supply chains, as well as the effects of a prevailing deep overall uncertainty about the economic prospects. Wikipedia reports on the Fukushima 50. The Fukushima 50 were present when an explosion and fire occurred at the Unit 4 reactor. There is confusion as to what extent radiation may have been released as a result of this incident. The Japanese government appears reluctant to divulge, divulge too much information about the situation for fear of causing panic. Fukushima women sit in protest at government offices to demand better protection for children exposed to radiation November 3, 2011. About 100 women from Fukushima, Japan, have started a week-long sit-in at a government office in Tokyo to demand greater protection for children affected by radiation. Many children and their families are trapped in Fukushima because they can't afford to move, explains um, Miss, Mrs. Oga, 38, a housewife living in the prefecture and one of the sit-in organizers. The government has set the accepted radiation exposure rate too high. Fukushima Daiichi ANS Committee Report The inadequate response by TEPCO to the unfolding events at Fukushima Daiichi should not have been a surprise to anyone. Fukushima fallout should the West Coast be concerned, November 7, 2013. Fukushima is an enormous problem that's getting bigger. It's like the fox overseeing the chicken coop, and it's a huge problem, said Dr. Jimmy Hara from the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. Fukushima fishermen, no, you can't dump that water. May 14, 2013, Tokyo Electric sought permission to pump radioactive groundwater into the ocean. TEPCO officials underestimated Fukushima fishermen's anger and distrust towards the company, whose failures continue to threaten their livelihoods. Fukushima fishermen ruined by TEPCO, now key in radiation fight, August 29, 2013. Tokyo Electric Power Company ruined the livelihoods of the commercial fishermen that trolled the seas off Fukushima Prefecture when its leaking reactors poisoned the fishing grounds. The utility now needs their help. The issue is a series of wells and pipes built by Tokyo Electric to alter the course of groundwater flowing from the hills behind the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear station. The bypass, which is ready to operate, will divert water away from the plant's damaged reactors and into the Pacific, thus reducing contamination, says Tokyo Electric. With Tokyo Electric's history of falsifying safety records, hiding accidents, and ignoring warnings, fishermen aren't convinced the system is safe. Multiple medias covered this story, yet each one was a copy-paste of the same report. Not surprising, since the Freedom of Information documents from March 11, 2011 have more to do with organizing content restrictions of all Fukushima disaster public reports 
then dealing with the crises and obtaining sensible information from te TEPCO about critical conditions and radiation readings. Much of the information TEPCO released to the NRC was misleading and caused confusion among the responding officials. Japan should fire TEPCO, convert to a nuclear-free country, and assign these fishermen to own and operate renewable energy sources. They are more capable of handling a disaster than TEPCO and their Yakuza contractors. Freedom of Information Document File Number ML11175A275, dated Friday, March 11, 2011, 405 a.m. Japan, no radiation leaks or abnormalities. Eleven reactors shut down. Friday, March 11, 2011, 639 a.m. Japan initiates emergency protocol after earthquake. TEPCO sent the emergency report because emergency diesel generators at the sites were out of order. It said there was no report that the radiation was detected outside of the site. It said that an energy headquarters, emergency headquarters, had been set up and will issue information hourly. Friday, March the 11th, 2011, 7.34 a.m. Call off emergency. TEPCO called off the emergency because they were unable to monitor the water level in the reactors. Friday, March the 11th, 2011, 4.05 p.m. Japan Reactor. New announcement. Japan releases a report saying sounds like they must not have indicated, not have indication of RCI flow or for some reason the cooling is not effective. Friday, March the 11th, 3 p.m. RE aircraft coolant cooling soon to be restored. Note John Lenning assumes the problem relates to venting the primary containment. Why is he guessing? The same day John sends an email to Paul Klein reporting on media stories about disaster. Yeah, no kidding. It also looks like externally the lock bums and ninmans are being quoted versus officials since official sources can't or won't comment. Another site says this. Koyodo News Agency quoted the company as saying that the radiation level was rising in the turbine building and the pressure had risen to 15 times the design capacity. I hope that's not correctly interpreted as 1.5 times design pressure of the RPV. I was hoping we would send out an internal email about this event. Isn't that why we get test messages during drills? Wonder about the details of how this played out. I still see st stories talking about the primary pressure rising, now going on 13 hours after the event initiated. Friday, March the 11th, 2011, 9.26 a.m., Japan Nuclear Plants, the right hand attempts to meet the left hand. Anyone hear news coming through on Japan's reactors? I've been reading reports of four reactors shut down, one reported to have lost cooling, one that reported a fire, and evacuations being ordered. 6.11 a.m. Fukushima, one and two cooling system problems. According to NHK TV News, Japan Broadcasting Corporation, the Fukushima one and two reactors are experiencing reactor cooling problems after diesel generator failures, but also saying there is no cause for alarm, even though the government has declared a nuclear emergency situation. 11.40 a.m. Tsunami warning issued. 12.09 p.m. U.S. delivers coolant to Japan nuclear plant. Clinton plant being cooled. I just got a request from a friend which mentioned this report. I would be interested in anything, everything you get on it. Delivering coolant via aircraft does not make much sense. The report if the report is accurate, as written, Japan and us has a problem. The United States has transported coolant to a Japanese nuclear plant affected by a massive earthquake and will continue to assist Japan, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said on Friday, 11.01 a.m., from the Tom Boyce to Stuart Richards and Michael Case. There is nothing on NRC's website, although this is going on in a foreign country. I would think NRC would at least acknowledge it. 
and perhaps U.S. government should offer its help. IAEA is reported to be asking for information. 6.12 p.m. Brian wants us to be prepared to answer questions on the earthquake tsunami, particularly as it is related to U.S. plants. This, so this is why we hear so much about U.S. plants whenever we get reports about Japan's disaster. March the 11th, uh, 2011, the people of a town near Fukushima Daiichi units within two kilometers were ordered to evacuate their homes. This was a voluntary evacuation order. Many people did not understand the seriousness of the disaster. Sent Tuesday, March 15th, 11.23 a.m. and Camier asked Josh Perez, John Akey, and a few more people, can you guys look at some of the engineering questions and help us out? Please just look at the unanswered questions and pick the ones most suited to you, and especially those which Cliff, John, and I would be challenged to answer. Response. We are going to compare this with other database that we have for all reactors, not just boiling water reactors. By the way, not all Mark I reactors at Fukushima are BWR3. Only Unit 1 was a BWR3. The other units are boiling water reactor 4s. It may not be useful at this stage to separate the Mark I reactors in the 3, 4, 5 categories. This struck my interest in two ways. Firstly, the people who are supposed to be uh, knowing what's going on here, not getting proper reports from TEPCO, and they're not qualified to answer questions about the nuclear disaster. They obviously are relying on outside help, and yet I see no efforts made to contact TEPCO for clarification or translation on their reports. Secondly, the response is most annoying to a layperson as myself. They will relate whatever critical information about the Fukushima plants that becomes available to reactors of a different design and of similar models. Then adds the Mark I reactor information, which just makes me wonder, why would these experts even consider comparing apples to oranges? Is a boiling water reactor 3 more serious than a boiling water reactor 4? Why withhold this information? Is there something about the combination of models that added to um, an apparent design flaw? Nuclear reactors should not detonate, yet Diachi number 3 absolutely detonated, and nuclear s specialists are still saying detonation is not possible. That is a very, that is very serious denial, folks. The Diachi number 1 is the only BWR3. The other five are BWR4. March 14th, 2011, 3.46 p.m. Herman told me that all the BWR Mark I reactors, only six are like the ones in Fukushima, the BWR-3 version. Attached is a table with two tabs, one with the 5 US BWR-3 Mark I, and the other with all of them. Uh, Millstone One is closed. Even the BWR-3 may differ from those in Japan. For example, security upgrades. Oh boy, what those in Japan is he referring to? There is only one Mark I BWR-3 in Fukushima. There is no comparison being made with the BWR-4 models or the combination of categories used and their locations. Their basements are all underwater. The buildings sit on top of the riverbed, uh, of course the basements of the buildings suffer damage in the earthquake. Why be so focused on Building 1? Could it be TEPCO only sent pictures of Building 1 deliberately to cause the experts to believe the other reactors were under control? Regardless of the reason, this course of action taken by these nuclear experts is discouraging to say the least. The proper response would be to direct all efforts into acquiring accurate information from TEPCO instead of flying blind and pretending to solve a nuclear crisis. As for security upgrades, there is evidence that supports the possibility that Israel hid nuclear bombs inside the, the security cameras that they installed inside the Diachi reactors. 
check my link for Fukushima security cameras in the description. As Josh Perez referring to these specific cameras, seems you could be implying that the type of security cameras installed inside the reactors could be partly or wholly responsible for the nuclear disaster at the Diachi plant. New info, Japan offered to enrich uranium for Iran and four months later the Daimona Dozen showed up with a really fancy camera. Um, Israeli news, Japan offers to enrich uranium for Iran. Proposal for Japan to enrich uranium for Tehran was floated in December with U.S. approval. Reactor 3 is completely missing, which means the press and anyone who has claimed anything about pressures, temperatures, containment, etc. at Reactor 3 after March 14th is lying and people need to pay attention to it because failure of the public to realize the massive extent of the lies but what is going on there will leave the door open to a repeat event. Reactor 4 is Building 7, demolished by explosives. Reactor 4 had been defueled and was undergoing replacements of the internal stainless steel shroud, yet blew its containment anyway. That is, the final smoking gun, an empty reactor is inert and cannot produce an explosion, yet one happened at 4 that was so powerful it destroyed the structure, leaving it in danger of falling over. Overheated open fuel pools cannot produce hydrogen because an open fuel pool, the water boils off at 100 Celsius and won't be present in pressurized form at 2000 degrees Celsius to liberate its hydrogen by losing its oxygen to the zircon, zircon cladding in the fuel rods. The rods will prefer, prefer the free oxygen in the air and burn long before attempting to claim the oxygen in whatever humidity there might be. Fuel rods only contain 20% fusionable material, therefore could not have produced the prompt crit criticality in the fuel pools. Andy Arnie Gunderson, the most qualified nuclear engineer in the world, has spoken of. This report includes a background investigation of Arnie Gunderson, which proves he is a fraud who is hiding how big the disaster at Fukushima is. He's making statements which de defy the laws of physics and hide what really happened at Fukushima because if it, if it became widely known, how serious, serious questions would be asked. When have you heard Gunderson talk about a totally missing reactor? Something had to cause number three to vanish. It weighed over a million pounds. Where did it go? The quake was not what we were told. Take a close look at the next pictures. Look for any earthquake damage prior to the tsunami and then examine the original se seismic report. A lot different than what was been reported to, to most of the world. They, the Israelis, plant the virus, install real cameras outside the facility, and functional, poorly disguised nuke cameras inside the facility. In addition to this, they install an unauthorized data collection to allow control of all the guts of the, vi the facility via the virus. They admitted to this connection as discussed later on this page. After installing the Stusnik virus, the unauthorized connection, and the nukes, they scram. Tsunami comes in, swamps. Stusnik infected power plant, direct video feed from legitimate cameras, um, security company installed, gets, into, gets to David via totally the unauthorized channel. David knows just when to cut the generators off, Others on the team do all they can to counteract the measures taken by the employees at Fukushima who are unable or unaware an attack is taking place and do not understand why everything is going crazy. When I first came across this story, it sounded like the rantings of a paranoid madman. Yet the more research I do, the more this is the only one story that puts the evidence into a logical format and answers all the questions, who, what, where, when, why, and how. I find it increasingly difficult to believe Arne Gunderson, not just in terms of his experience, but his, in his integrity especially. Seems he may well be a player in the Plumegate cover-up by seeming to be disclosing accurate information only to be hiding the actual truth. He also has a history of lying, if you examine his resume. Questions and answers for potential OPA questions. The events that have occurred in Japan are the result of a combination of highly unlikely natural disasters. Here is the sort of play on words that we are being subjected to. 
The meaning can go both ways. Most of us want to believe good things, so it's natural to take the sentences meaning the earthquake and tsunami were exceptionally rare events. In fact, the Fukushima disaster was highly unlikely natural, in light of the evidence I have shared in this video. It is extremely unlikely to, that a similar event could occur in the United States. They have no basis for this claim if Fukushima was a natural disaster because we are not yet able to predict with 100% accuracy when a natural disaster will happen, where exactly it will be, and how much destruction will result. From the evidence I have found, it is unlikely to happen over here because Israel has no reason to attack the U.S. Um, has the crisis changed your opinion about the safety of U.S. nuclear power plants? No, the NRC remains confident that the design of the U.S. nuclear plants ensure the continued protection of the public health and safety. The U.S. has not yet engaged in activities that angered the Israeli government, so no need for Israel to plant nuclear bombs in the ocean near any U.S. nuclear power plants. Also, the U.S. does not require any outside technology to update the security equipment, so no opportunity for the Susnet virus to be implanted and no opportunity to install a nuclear bomb disguised as a reactor camera. This is how the U.S. is able to ensure the continued protection of public health and safety. I have read enough from the freedom of information to understand the source of media control. My main objective for making this video has already been accomplished. I see no point in reviewing any more freedom of information documents as the information thus far has been deliberately manipulated to conceal the truth and confuse the readers and I have only examined half of the first document in this video. Besides, Hattrick Penry has already written an in-depth book about the Freedom of Information documents uh, called Something Wicked This Way Comes where he exposes a plume gate cover-up and he has a few YouTube videos on the same topic. The truth cannot be found in the Freedom of Information documents nor does mainstream media p possess the integrity to do the right thing and join us in exposing the truth. The truth is hiding behind the entire nuclear industry, mainstream media, governments, universities, scientists, and other brainwashed professional and private individuals. Our only sensible option is to turn to alternative forms of media wherever possible and make our own media reports based on what we believe to be the closest to the truth, if not completely accurate. Once I realized the Freedom of Information documents do not contain the real evidence, I had to search out more sources. I found a website that TEPCO uses to post their reports. Rather convenient, NRC agents can send emails but can't figure out how to check a website. The information they were looking for was there the whole time. They sat around making up a phony story about what happened, including unrelated comparisons used as real evidence, and agreeing unanimous, unanimously like Illuminati minions, to lie to us, the public, about the dangers coming our way. When the NRC members did finally find the TEPCO website, they chose to continue to conceal the truth from us, and most of that redacted information in the Freedom of Information emails is about the postings from TEPCO on the TEPCO website, information we can go read for ourselves. So why do we have an NRC when they are so redundant? Well, thanks to the Lack of Information Act, formerly known to me as the Freedom of Information Act, I have a very large collection of alternative media sources, and the list is growing daily. I will, of course, continue to share as many links as I can with you. I hope you find your answers, too. We should stand together and share our information with family, friends, and fellow truth seekers. Hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil, defines the majority of people in the world. We need to wake up, open our eyes fully, tune our ears into the voice of wisdom and expose the truth by any and all means available. Should we continue in silence and be totally obedient to corruption and then let them blindfold us whilst we are directed into the slaughterhouse like pigs in their prime? Or should we make our voices heard when we deny to God and refuse to be slaves to a lie? As long as we continue to expose their deceptions and demand the whole truth to be known, the walls of Plume Gate will eventually come crashing down just like the walls of Jericho. Clearly the wrong kind of people are running the world in a race to hell, and we do not have to go along with them. Peace is not in the world. The only true, true peace is to have God's grace. 
Salvation in the Lord is the key to strength, courage, wisdom, everything one needs to su survive this nuclear genocide and rejoice with victory at the end. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this interesting, if not inspiring, and maybe even you learned something, or at least have some food for thought. Be well, and may God bless you.